Hello, I thought I'd make another version of the World Space Triplanar Material tutorial that I made in the past because I figured out um, some things I think could be done better um, and to also help understand how this works a little more. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is add a texture object because we're going to reuse the same texture um, for different sides of the mesh, right? Because we're going to make a triplanar material, essentially it's going to be projected onto the X, Y, and Z axes, right? So I like, let's use the default diffuse texture to start with because it's pretty easy to see. So if we stick it on this, uh, you can't do that, right? <laughs> let's use a texture sampler. Yeah, and now you can do it. All right, so that's on there, right? We have one texture object. Okay, so um, typically a texture sampler is going to use the default UVs, right, that are in your mesh. So if you want to use different ones, especially from the world space position, use absolute world position. And I like to do excluding material shader offsets. Um, the This will exclude any offsets created by world position offset. All right. And what I'd like to do here is divide it by a parameter that we'll call texture size. Okay, so how big is this texture represented in the world? So let, if this texture, you know, is a meter, let's say, then that would be a hundred centimeters, right? Um, so let's make a float three out of this because we'll assume it's the same size in all dimensions. Right. Okay. And at this point, this uh, world position, um, which is, you know, the X, Y, and Z location in the world of this pixel. Let's go ahead and mask that out. So if you hit Shift-C, you'll get a component mask. And if we pop that into the UV, we'll see that something's happening. So it's easy to visualize this if you use the square, because now you can see that on the top and the bottom we're good, but nowhere else, right? Okay, so that means that this texture sample is good for Z, right? If you look at the Z axis here, all right. So we can duplicate our texture sample. And let's create another mask here. And this mask is going to be different, right? And let's just guess, maybe what, what do you think R and B would produce? So let's hook that up. If we look here, that is the Y axis, you see? So we'll call that one Y. And finally, we're going to need another mask, right? Oh, whoops. Wow. Okay. So let's do green and blue. And we got to have a texture, right? Okay, now that one is the x-axis, right? So there we go. Okay, so now we have three textures um, sample or one texture sampled into the three axes, and then we need to combine them in some way, right? So let's use a lerp to do that. But what's going to drive the lerp? Well, we're going to need the normal. So the vertex normal in world space. So if we, well, let's just pop it in there to see what that is first. So you'll see we got blue on top, red on X side, green on Y side, right? So it's the same colors we'd expect from the axes here. So if we mask out just X, then now we have X is white and nothing else, right? We want the negative x, so it's probably good to go ahead and do an absolute value, right? 
So now we should have positive and minus x both white. Right? So where we want to use x, so here's our x texture, where we want that to be true, we would use this vertex normal, right? So let's pop that into there, like that. And we could just stick Y in there, I guess. Okay. Where we want to use Z. All right, so Z is going to be the B on the mask, right? Red for X, G for Y, B for Z. So there we go, we got Z is white. Gonna need absolute value again, right? So the absolute value is going to now get us the top and bottom Z, just like we want. So let's make another lerp. And this one will be for when you want the Z texture, right? And this will feed out of that guy. Okay, there we go. Now look, we have the texture on the cube correctly on every side. And if we change the size, like let's say that texture is two meters, right? Okay, does it look okay on a sphere? Sort of, I mean, there's some blending that's occurring, right? the cylinder, same kind of thing. Okay. Um, so if you look at this, uh, there actually is a note called World Aligned Texture that you can use, which does a lot of this for you if you want. If you open up, if you double click the node, you'll see what's in it, right? And you can see somebody else made this. It takes in the world position. It does exactly the same kind of thing. Texture size, divides it down, uh, masks each of these um, out to get the right UVs for each face. Um, it uses the same texture object. It lerps them together and then outputs them. The only thing, it and it uses the vertex normal for the lerps, right? It has a contrast. It has some other stuff in here that I'm not 100% sure why you'd want it, um, as, as well as this negative one multiplier on the texture size. I really don't know why that is there. Um, so what I made here is a bit, perhaps a few instructions cheaper. Um, if you wanna know, like if you double click any node and it exists as a compilation of multiple nodes, you can, you can do it that way. But like you'll see if you double click append for example there's nowhere to go that's not actually there's no sub nodes there it's an actual hlsl command right all right so now that we have this right why don't we make a material function material function like that and we could just copy all of this stuff into that material function and we can reuse it more easily So we'll go there. Um, so we're obviously going to need this texture object to be a function input. Is that a texture 2D? I assume so. Yeah. Okay, so that way we can set the texture. Um, we're going to need a function input for the this, right? I'm just going to copy that, paste that, turn that into a scalar. And if you hold down control, you can drag all of those, right? Okay, so we got our texture input, we got our texture size input, um, and that's really all we need, right? Now we can take our triplanar material function, drag it in here. Um, right. Take our texture object, 
world space there. Right, there we go. Now we have the same base color as we wanted before. Now, let's uh, make the assumption that we might want to do this for normal. So let's get the default normal, which is just a texture um, that's in the engine content. So let's do the exact same thing here, right? And now, now we've got normals. Yep, we do. A little hard to see, maybe. They seem to look okay. Um, all right, I, and then we could do this again. Maybe we want. Default roughness, does that exist? Nope. <laughs> uh, what other default textures do we have? Default form. Mm. Well, anyway, you could put roughness in here, right? And then you could have triplanar uh, base color, normal, and roughness, and this would all work. The only problem being that each one of these has three texture samplers, which are one of the most expensive things you can use, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, hopefully uh, this answers more questions. Let me know if you have any. Thanks.